Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler and today we are talking about how to make graphics for elementary general music teaching videos. In the first part of this series, we talked about how to set up a space for filming elementary music videos. And then in the last video, we talked about how to get started with editing. Today, we will look at one of the most requested topics when it comes to editing, and that is graphics. As music teachers, we use visuals all the time. Aside from just standard notation, um, we want students to explore music in a variety of visual ways, and that might mean using graphic notation to represent melodic contour. It might mean making a pathway on the board for students to mimic in a movement activity. It might mean writing out the form of a song so students know when to sing the main part and when to improvise. And then for students who benefit from pictures and communication, we use visuals to help with transitions. Or we might display ORF instruments or fingering charts for recorder or ukulele. Uh, when we stop and think about all the ways we use visuals in our regular classes, it's pretty obvious why we would want to utilize graphics in teaching videos for elementary general music. But what if you don't really consider yourself to be great at technology? What if you don't view yourself as having the appropriate skill level to implement graphics in your videos? Today we will walk through two processes for making graphics for elementary general music videos. The first process uses Google Slides, and I guarantee that it is an approach you can facilitate. The second one is more old school, and it uses just paper and a marker. So let's jump in. Okay, so we are here in Google Slides. I have a blank presentation open, and then I also have in another tab this uh, collection of music notation symbols, and these are on my website as a paid product, so you can grab them if you're interested. Um, you can also find lots of other options like these on Teachers Pay Teachers. The video project we've been working on the past in the past two videos has been with the song Apple Tree, and so that's what I want to make these graphics go with. I want to write the rhythm of apple tree. So I'll go over here to this first slide rhythms and I want quarter notes and eighth notes. So I will just control C or command C and drop them in. Uh, let's resize them just by clicking and dragging. That first line repeats. So apple tree, apple tree. And we'll just do the first eight beats. So will your apples fall on me? Something that I am pretty picky about is making sure that things line up in a way that is reflective of the space. The whole point of visual notation is to preserve how a sound looks. And so if I have notation that is spread out all over the place, all over the place on the page, that's not really reflective of the rhythm of the song. So I am pretty um, particular about making things line up. So I'm gonna line that in the middle and then I can also distribute it horizontally. And then with those eighth notes distributed, I can move the rest of these rhythms around to make sure that they're in alignment with how they fall in the meter. As I'm moving these around, I have my shift button enabled. I'm, so I'm going shift click. And when I do shift click, it makes it so that I can only move these objects in line with where they've started. So without that shift on, I can move it way up around here and I can really get out of alignment, um, which is great for some things, for this, not so much. So to make sure that I am absolutely on the same plane, I have this shift key enabled. Now I want to center all of these on the page. So I'm gonna go Control Alt G and that brings them all together as one clip. So now I can move it around the slide and make sure that it's centered. I have these guides that Google Slide just gives me out of the goodness of its heart, but I can also uh, right click and center on the page horizontally and then center on the page vertically just to make sure. And that's it, it is that simple. What we will do next is go to file and I just want to download this as a JPEG. Now let's say that you don't want to do something that is notation specific. Let's say that you want to make a pathway for students to follow around their living room. 
For that, we will go up to the line tool and select scribble. And from there, we can move up, down, all around, and end up back where we started. This would be an interesting pathway. Let's go with it. We'll go file and download as a JPEG. It's only gonna do this specific slide. Next, we are ready to throw these images into DaVinci Resolve. If you recall from the last video, we talked about turning off Wi-Fi so your computer doesn't have a lot of things running in the background. So that's what I will do and then open up DaVinci. Okay, now we have DaVinci Resolve open and we have these two images that have been added to the media bin. Uh, we talked about how to do that in the last video, so if you missed it, you can go back and watch. Let's say that I want to add these images to Apple Tree. That's a really easy just drag and drop situation. So I can drag that into the timeline and move it around anywhere that I want it to show up. Let's put it in at the very beginning and I will retime it. Um, I'm just clicking and dragging to change the length of this picture. Now you can see that it's taking up my entire screen, which is completely unnecessary. So let's resize that by going to the left hand side and I'm gonna click the transform tool. When I have the image selected and I've selected the transform tool, I can just click and drag this to be however big or little I want it to be. And then I can also drag it anywhere on the screen. So let's say that I want to have it floating here in the bottom right hand corner. There we go, that's it, easy peasy. So now let's talk about another pathway that you might consider if you feel like the Google Slides JPEG option is a bit out of your comfort zone. When we are in class with our students and we need to write something down, chances are we just take a marker and we draw it on the whiteboard. There's no reason we can't replicate that same process here. So let's use a marker and a piece of paper to do this same exact thing. All right, we have just a scrap sheet of paper here and I am going to write the notation just like we would in Google Slides. And I will try to make this a little bit more bold than I would if I were just uh, writing it for myself. Okay, that's an example of good enough is good enough. Next, let's take a picture. And then just like last time, we will upload this to Google Drive. So we're here in DaVinci Resolve, and this is gonna be the exact same process as we walked through with the other JPEG files. We're just gonna drag it and drop it in. This is not uncommon. If you remember in the last video, this happened as well, but it's an easy fix. I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side to rotation angle, because as you can see, my image is vertical and I want it to be horizontal. So I will go over to rotation angle, and I just wanna rotate it by 90 degrees. And now we're set. And then same thing here with the transform tool selected. I can move this around anywhere I want it to land on the screen. So we'll go ahead and resize that and drag it into the right hand corner as well. And that is it, we are set. So you can use this exact same process and throw anything into the video that you would normally just write on your board at school. If you have any questions about this process, I would love to hear from you. I am not a tech person, I am a music teacher, but I am here to help any way I can. You can drop a comment below, you can find me on Instagram, I am at Victoria Bowler, or you can shoot me an email, victoria at victoriabowler.com. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching.